If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, pretty excited about coming back from this LA trip. You know why? Uh, I know why. I know why. I know, you know, yeah. I know what you're going to say, dude. I got held up at the uh, security because of this. Did you really? Uh, what? No, actually, it was Adam. I did. No. Yeah. But the irony in this was this. I c- totally fucking called myself out. So before, when we get on, we all did carry-ons because this is a one-day trip to LA. Yeah. So, and we went and saw Sex with Emily, which always a good time with her. Dr. Emily Morse. She hooks up a uh, plethora of toys for the for all of us. Dude, sometimes people will visit us or we'll yeah. interview people. Amazing gifts. And they give us gifts, right? Like, oh, here's a protein powder I came out with, or here's the new book that I wrote. Yeah. Or here's a giant dildo <laughs> for yeah. your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Do- Dr. Emily Morse has a sex toy closet. Yeah. Literally opens the door. Of to, like the best yeah. of the best stuff. And they're the brand market. new. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so not, it's so not weird. got a lot of anal beads. Yeah, it's not weird. It's not like you open them Why up and they're do used. That? I don't know. Huh? Oh, I mean, Justin and I got things for our girls, and you yeah. were the only one that gets I mean, anal got, beads and things for yourself. You got yeah, a whip yeah. And, and some horse. That's actually not true. Tails. I didn't get anal beads. Weird. So the funny part is, though, I got the one that does the the vibrating suction on the clitoris. Ooh. That's what it's for. Yeah, that is. We good were one. Adam. I'll show you where that is later. We were. Yeah, yeah. We were. Remember, I'm the guy who gives oh. ten orgasms yeah, that I have to use. Ten orgasms. It's too many. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, gotta put that. Did, uh, gotta she, put that cannabis cream on. How did she die? Limit. There's a she, limit. She's dead. What happened, Adam? Ten is too many. Too many orgasms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we all did carry-ons, right? And. I brought Katrina back uh, like the Cadillac of vibrators. Mm. It's fucking twelve inches around. That yeah. thing's crazy. And it's <laughs> it's the Mamba. And it kind of looks like a like an old school pistol, you know. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm almost certain that I'm gonna get flagged, and I'm mm. I'm debating whether I should check the back. But I figured like all the boys have got toys. I'm like, okay, yeah. we're all gonna get flagged. It'll be a big funny thing, whatever. So we're we're in Everything line. I have vibrates. My bag gets pulled to the side, and the guys are, you know, calls. Is this your bag? Yeah. So he's unzipping. I said, it's probably my big dildo that I have inside there. The guy starts laughing, but then he goes right for my bathroom bag, and he opens up, and it's the same damn thing that keeps getting me. Is I have this little toothbrush that I was so excited to find at Rite Aid about I don't know six months ago or so, and I like it because um, I don't know about you guys, but I always lose. Those, you know, if your toothbrush holders, you know, the little cases, so yeah. you know, so they don't yeah. get dirty in your bag and stuff like that. I always lose those things. So I found a toothbrush that's like a switchblade. Ah, it folds, folds it folds in, into yeah. itself. Mm. So I don't need a case for it. It, it just so they thought you had a switchblade. So they were going for the one thing that was a toothbrush and yeah. you just blurted out. I just blurted out. Yeah. It it's must prob- be my dildo. It's probably dildo. my dildo. Right. By the way, it's not a dildo, it's a vibrator. Yeah. Dildos don't Big difference. vibrate. Mm. Vibrators vibrate. Yeah, but it's a lot funnier to say dildo than it is to say vibrator cell. Mm. Yes. When you say my yeah. giant both dildo. both funny. No. Uh. When you say my giant dildo is in there, it sounds a lot funnier than saying my giant vibrator. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you might be right there. Yes. I am It right. did give me a chuckle. Yeah. Yes. It did give me a chuckle. Yes. Yeah. What color is I it? I tried to video capture it. I don't know what color it is. It's in the box. Though. It's, it's still in the box? box. Yeah. yeah. Well, fine. You can ask Katrina. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. All right. I was going to say something gross. I'm not there going to. But anyway- I like Dr. So, Emily. I, we She's all such do. a cool girl. Yeah. Great well, episode. We talk all about sex. No holds bar. And she does not shy away from any topic. Trust me, Adam tried to get her to shy away. Yeah, I did. And she didn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's she's a fun person. Did we cover squirting? I think we might have covered squirting. Uh, that might have been the first time Maybe we interviewed the first her. Time. Yeah. yeah. This one we talked about her the time that she went to a sex party. Right. Oh, the yeah. sex party. Yeah, we talk right, about yeah. multiple partners. We talk about a lot of different things in this episode. This wow, is a really you good. Guys ep- are in for a treat. This mm-hmm. is a good episode. I, I, you know, and like always, I feel like the first time we ever meet anybody, it's a decent episode. The second, the third time, and I, once we get comfortable and we've been around people enough times, mm-hmm. I feel like it really. And we did two episodes with her. We did one on her show. So if you guys haven't checked out her show, we she interviewed us. I thought that was really cool. She mm-hmm. we answered some of the questions from her audience. Her podcast has been around for a while. It's one of the more popular ones around. Uh, it's called Sex with Emily. You can actually find it on any podcast app. Or where is she? She's, she's on Sirius now, right? Yeah. yeah. She's also on now on Sirius. Um, so, uh, yeah, Dr. Emily Morris. And also, I do want to remind everybody that this month we may have lost our minds completely. What? We've taken MAPS Anabolic, the foundational MAPS program, we took the price and we said, fuck it, cut in half. Yeah. So now it's 50% off. Here's my brain. Under $60, you can get the full 
MAPS Anabolic Program. The entire thing, the whole enchilada for 50% off. You can find that at mindpumpmedia.com. You can also find our bundles like the Sexy Athlete Bundle or the Build Your Butt Bundle, right, Justin? Yeah. Or the Super Bundle, which is go-to. a year of exercise programming. So you can find all the bundles plus the 50% off MAPS Anabolic at mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here we are talking to the lovely and Dr. To Emily you. Morse. What did you grab over there? Greedy? Did you grab three things? No, well, I, I wanted to ask this her questions guy. about yeah, these things. I mean, international. Four hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. No, 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 we can't give that much. We're gonna have to to the show. We're talking yeah. about. It. Yeah, Emily, I have used nipple clamps well, before, and I've seen these before, which are they look like little pumps. Yes, it's from um, Sport Sheets, I believe. Right, they're sex experience. They're little pumps. So it just here's the thing, you guys. The nipples are so underplayed. Women can have nipple orgasms, and it's yes. it really can feel amazing. So can this they still is just like after a child. Like yes. A kid? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. They okay. can do them. Yes, and some women, you could do it in a lot of different ways, but I think women just don't spend enough time there. Maybe their partners don't spend enough time. So these would just feel, it would be like a suction and it would just be like mm. sending, you know, kind of just the pressure and is the it pulling. Pulse? Is that, is it's is pulsing, it? yeah. Oh, the, wow. Like with the, the, yeah, they look like little. They look like little, little, like little horns. suction cups. Yeah. They look like little yeah. horns. They're like, like suction horns. cup horns. Wah, wah. Yeah. And, um, Kind of those might even yet. work on it. One of them might even work on the clitoris. That's true. Know. It's like the womanizer. There's a toy that does that too. It's like indirect stimulation or like a light, like the um the sucking, the pushing, the pulling. It's indirect stimulation. Mm. So it's not even naturally like you're kind of on it, but it's pulling on the, the nipple, which could mm-hmm. feel great. And the same part, when a woman has an orgasm, a woman's turned on, the clitoris and the nipples are connected to the same part of the brain. What? Mm. So yeah, people don't often know that. So you can I actually have that. orgasm, some people like through their nipples or through, and so yeah, we should pay way more attention mm. to the nipples. You know, it's funny, I've had this conversation with people before and <laughs> all the evidence you need is, because orgasms happen in the brain anyway. So you, technically you could have an orgasm without any touch, right? right? Happens when we dream. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like people will have a dream and have an orgasm. So why it's can't a, they it's a game Katrina and I play all the time. But how, do, <laughs> yeah, how, how yeah. can you make her orgasm? Because I know I know her body so well that I don't even have to touch her and I can make her orgasm. Really? Do you? <laughs> do you? Sw- swear to God. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> swear to God. No, he's serious. You guys don't know I'm this? I'm dead serious. He just does this. You yeah. do the Jedi mind yeah, trick yeah, on him? Yeah, that's... That's yeah. how gangster I am, yeah. for sure. You're so gangster. I mean, I've been with her for seven years, you know, so I've, I've definitely explored and figured that body out for sure. So it doesn't take much touching at all. I, and that's like one of my favorite things to do is to see how Even, little I can touch her and still make her orgasm. Wow. Because of words? Because you're like talking to her? Or yeah, talking to her, just barely grazing across her body and stuff. Yeah, and, you guys, light touch too. Mm, yeah, Most women yeah. want very, very light touch. I, I think I, that's a mistake that I think a lot, I think a lot of guys think, because especially if you're, I think it's even more important now because of this generation that's coming up that watches so much porn. Right, we yeah. gotta undo all that. And porn is so like slamming Super into the rough. woman and it's like I've, you know, it's very rare that you have that kind of sex. You know very rare. Right. It's, it's really rare to even want it. Most women want the light. I always tell men go five times slower right. than you are. Mm-hmm. And then even if they go three times slower, we're all happy. Mm. Yeah. What would you say is the, I guess the, the must have sex toy or the one that's probably no 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 I want to get more personal stable. here which one oh, has we- given you the biggest orgasm <laughs> mm-hmm. let's just go straight to none of the, and remember this is on our show so you don't that's have no right. right. I forgot there's, no, you gotta there's, no, there's nothing that you have to be responsible for saying for a sponsor or whatever no, that. No, I want to no. know which one has made you crawl up the wall the most oh god there's been I mean honestly I would say initially the magic wand we were just talking about mm-hmm. the magic wand which is like the Mack truck of all vibrators it's, it's been on for 50 years mm-hmm. it no longer plugs in it's Whoa. rechargeable oh wow and, um, I have the old school one. I would say, I would say that that old one, tiny. what still works, it's powerful, and your the clitoral orgasms are amazing. Like when I first got that, I was uh, you couldn't, you had to have it always plugged into the wall. So when I lived in San Francisco, I remember I'll, I got a new nightstand, and I, I remember I drilled a hole in the back just so it could always be plugged into the wall. So I love that <laughs> one. That's commitment. Yeah, yeah, it is commitment. So that one was the one that I was like, oh my god, there's so many nerve endings, and it's not just about the clitoris, but the clitoris has eight thousand nerve endings, so it like stimulates all of them because like your whole body's vibrating. I would say the womanizer is also the most... So I've been doing this for 13 years and I pretty much have that tried every That sounds like toy. such a funny name. They're changing the name, I hope. It sounds like that, the asshole you did in college, right? Right, right. Yeah. But the thing is, it's a German company that invented it and it uses indirect clitoral stimulation. It's called Pleasure Air Technology. Oh, it's that lipstick vibe. Did you see the one on the shelf? Oh. Let's bring that in. Yeah. What, oh, do mean, like, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm going to show you right now. Like I'm going to show you. It's air, pleasure air technology. Mm. And it's, oh, that's the one I'm going to go. I'm going to get that one. Okay, watch. It looks so, like a Chanel perfume It bottle. looks like a Chanel, right. Exactly. It looks like a um. Don't ask how I know lipstick. that. Lipstick. Yeah. And put your finger here. So imagine we that was won't. your- We won't. 
Oh, no, no. I'm getting this one. So this one sucks your clitoris. Sucks. It like lightly grazes it. And they, they call it the 60 second Ooh. orgasm because the women in this, and that's not even the highest. Oh, oh I see. It. So it's like, it's like little pulses of suction. Yep. And you can keep it in your purse oh God, and people have no idea if you're uh, getting just... ready to put your lipstick on or give yourself a normal Maybe my, my producer leaves it so under her pillow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right? I'm getting that. I'm getting okay, that. Okay, fine. That's the one I want. I know. Uh, I'll give you one. I want to give you everything. I do. So the Womanizer is a cool one. Um, I've had some great... I had my first internal orgasm Pass using... Pass that along when you're done here. Come on. Using... An, I can't remember what the toy was. But just any G-spot vibrator. I was like... I was just so limited. Women are just... A lot of women are very... Um, shut down in their bodies in the sense of they just think that they could orgasm in one way and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I will mm -hmm. only have a clitoral orgasm. No, like, there we have so many nerve endings, so much areas for, for pleasure and a lot of times because of trauma or shame or mm -hmm. we just have injury, we just shut things down yeah. there. So you got to open them up. Now, is it true that, that girls start masturbating later than, than, than men? Maybe because we were so no, external? I've never, I haven't heard that. Like okay. mostly what I hear from women is the common first masturbation story for women is I was like five years old or seven years old and I was riding a bike or I was riding a horse oh, like and I had an orgasm or I was taking a bath or a shower. And that's what I hear for a lot of women. It's like an accidental thing or they were like rubbing up against their, you know, their teddy bear. Right. And then there was some clitoral stimulation. Mm -hmm. And so I think that happens at all, all different ages for women. Now, the first time you used an, a, a sex toy, how old were you? I was probably 21, 22. Okay. Oh, wow. I was a very Is that the lit. average age? or, or? I, Well, now I hopefully they're using them. People are using them um, more frequently. But I, I don't know what the average age was. I just was very... Um, Kind of like you said, you grew up like a skinny kids and yeah. you didn't feel great about your body. It's like, I wasn't having orgasms. I never masturbated. I didn't even know about masturbation or even orgasms. I was having sex. I was about 20 years old and I was with a bunch of my friends at college one day. I was like, what is the big deal about sex? My boyfriend would come in from Michigan State. I was at Michigan. He'd come visit me and he'd pounding away and leave. I'm like, I really like, not leave, leave. We had a good loving relationship, but I'm like, he rolls over. What, I'm like, you guys, what is the big, what am I missing? Like, why is sex so great? They're like, Okay, back up. You've never like orgasm. I'm like, what the hell is now, that? Now, do you attribute that to your you not really knowing your body, or was yeah. he doing like porn style sex? No, back then? I think that he just well, he didn't know my body either. I used to think someday my prince will come, and so will I. And he'll figure it out. I believe that Literally. a man will show up, and he's going to know everything about my body because I knew that I knew nothing. And I was never educated on it. So if I don't know, he should know. So why isn't he giving me pleasure? And with mm -hmm. my girlfriends who were like, and I grew up in a very open home. My mom was like, if you have questions, ask me sex questions. But the challenge is, I think I didn't know what the questions were. You have sex, you're like, not gonna be like, hey, mom, is there something mm -hmm. to this? So then I realized at that point, oh, masturbation, orgasms. And I, then I started like, Studying and figuring it out, and here so I am. Once but you're I think my boy bought my my boyfriend bought me a toy oh. at the time. And so college. the first time you used it, did it just blow your mind? No, I still didn't have an orgasm from it right away because I think I was like kind of fearful of it, and I I just I'm trying to remember. I was very, to be honest, I was I haven't thought about this in a while. It took me a few years in that because I was also going through a bad time. Like my dad had just died when I was in college. Mm. It was like sophomore year, and I think I was just shut down altogether and I was just like I don't want to do anything and it wasn't until probably a few years later, a few years later that I was like oh because it was probably also I was enjoying sex because I was sad and depressed so and, from that time did you do you have like time frames where you're like at 22 I ended up having this sexual experience and that took me yeah. to another level then I had mm -hmm. this sexual experience mm -hmm. that took me to another level did you, do you have like, like monumental I do yeah. I guess I've never thought about it here I feel like we should do some kind of like timeline on yeah, the let's wall hear, let's hear the <laughs> let's, let's see the sex timeline yeah. oh my god okay, so, so 20 first, we're having bad Sex, bad sex, then what no happened? orgasms. Then what happened? No orgasms, and then twenty five. I think I had regular orgasms with a boyfriend who was very open, and he was like, he did really cool stuff. He was like, let's have sex on my mirror. Like he had some big mirror he put down the floor. We could watch each other. Like I was like, that's really hot. We watched porn together, and mm. at the time it was like the VHS tape, mm -hmm. and it was like cool. And then that was great sex. And then at um, oh my god, where you said else that's, that's at twenty five. You said twenty five. Better sex. Where I realized, oh, someone, it's there's so much more to do. It's so on? playful. When did I have amazing oral sex? I think like a lot of women in their 20s, I was very uncomfortable with oral in my early 20s. I thought that I wasn't, I thought that why would he really want to do this? Does he really want to be down there? And I think for a lot of guys in their 20s as well, and I know I'm going to hear from guys who are like, I'm great at it. I'm sure you are. But I'm saying after 13 years of doing my show, I know a lot about men and women and how they relate it. The guys also, they probably didn't know what they were doing as much. Mm -hmm. So I was more self-conscious around that but when um i feel like the and my best i'm just gonna do a side note here my pro tip 
for guys performing um, oral on a woman or probably on anyone is let them know that to lay back and to relax and just say, babe, I got this. I w- I'm going to be here all night. Don't go anywhere. So she relaxes. She relaxes. Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of women are like looking at the clock. It's been 12 minutes. If they're lucky, hopefully check out longer. But some <laughs> women are like, oh, it's been five. No, keep going with it. Let them know that you're into it, how great you taste, how much you love doing it. Because I think, because for women, there's been all these studies that have come out. Not that we really needed them, but I love these studies that say like the number one thing, like why women don't orgasm was the, was the, was, was the study and they showed that oral sex was like the number one thing that got women there. Yeah. So like if you are not performing oral, like mm-hmm. up your game, ask your partner what they want. Mm-hmm. So when did I have amazing oral? When did that start? God, I don't know if on the spot, when can I remember that? When when was it? Well, we Probably got my the, early 30s. When so, it was amazing. So you went from 25 mere sex guy. Start, mere sex start, guy. Starting to enjoy this a little bit. And then not till 30, does someone else rock right. the world? Mm-hmm. Well, I think I probably had good sex in the middle there, but then, yeah, 30, some guy was like, whoa, like he really, and I was more comfortable too. I was just going to say, now, do you attribute that to you kind of finding more about yourself? Absolutely. I'm 50% of the equation here for sure, if not more. Like I think that we bring ourselves to any situation. So, and I would say when my sex life really got, it was when I started the show. So I was 35 and I was like, oh my God, I, I, I was started to living in San Francisco, started getting to this whole sex world, not the expert, more like the guinea pig when I started. I was like, oh, people were like, come to a sex party. I was like, great. And I went to a sex party. I had a threesome, I, not at the party, that was separate. So I started getting all these toys in the mail. I would say Whoa. my biggest growth has been in the last like 13 uh, what, years. What's a sex party? Right. It's like a play party. Did you get your invitation? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. going so to the party. Yeah, it was just it you, was Doug, like and play, Justin. It yeah. was a play party, and you invite um, we'll couples you or single women are invited. And they're private parties, and it was somewhere in Marin County. And we took a bus, and you had to get there, like a nice bus. You could park your car. They couldn't tell you where you were going. And we drove up to this house. It was like a three-story house. There was like hot tubs on every level. And there was a bunch of sexy people. You Actually, know? sexy people. Because I always envision I I envision these things like the nude beaches. Oh, I always yeah. go there thinking I'm going to have a good fucking time. Right. I get there. You see some old Lots of bodies balls. I don't want to see naked. <laughs> So Every I think time. I just imagined no. sex parties. I was like, I'm going to go to one of these right. things, well, all excited, go there party. and not want to have sex. Yeah, just that's what I've wrinkles. heard too. Everyone's like, oh, every swinger has a ponytail. And yeah. No. I think that you find people, especially now, I think people are more open to it. So, so the sex party is like a regular party, but you go and people are drinking, but then you look around after a while and you're like, oh, is she giving him a blowjob? Or are they having a threesome? Mm-hmm. Is he, what's happening here? An orgy? But you could also sit there and just hang out and talk. You don't have to have sex. Wow. So, so what happened yeah. with you the first when the you went first to it? one I hooked up with this chick she was very pretty was this now was this your first experience with a female I'm trying to remember but I think I had like made out with someone yeah. like five years like this was like lot. your first yeah I know I you were bouncing that. around on us here it's hard to the timeline you guys this sexual timeline's all fucked up I know I, know. Like, wait, I, wait, just you know, like, until you're I barely know about my vagina to all of a sudden fucking on mirrors and now all of a sudden we're sleeping with women here yeah like you just it all happened because I was not I was really no, I really think. So what was the, the, was that the, something you had been thinking no, about? I'm like I'm trying to think, I'm forgetting people. Mm. Hold on, was I thinking about what? Yeah, like having sex with women. Yes. And did you go there with that intention? No, like, I had no intention. Wow. I was open. I never go in with a. It's so much better to go in like goalless. Like I don't mm. know what this is going to bring because that was also the attitude I was bringing to my show at the time. So then I would go on and I would talk about it. So. Now was there was there partially curiosity of like maybe this the you know female would actually maybe you would end up liking females more or is it more like an experimental thing i just wanted to try everything sexually i wanted to leave no sexual stone unturned i thought wow this is amazing and every time i did something it was like i learned so much it was mm-hmm. great stories it was great connections and i learned so much but like i've just i can't remember the entire timeline i would say most of it happened since i've started my show i know i definitely got more open in my 30s i knew how to ask for what i wanted i'm able to have orgasms all different ways now that i wasn't before and yeah sex parties were just so what was the what was the the go-to move for me and this girl Oh, with the girl. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love like, it. Guys hey, never, when oh, I, I tell my boyfriend, I absolutely date, want to know this. They literally want me to replay my stories with chicks over and over yes, again. Like, I feel like I'm with my boyfriend. eye contact first or what? What was it? What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying try to recreate hot. this. Okay, so the, the theme of the party was like, um, was, uh, what is it? Never, um, Robin Hood. What, like, uh, never, like everyone's like dresses like nymphs and fairies and stuff. So oh, okay. I was wearing like a little, um, white, like some fairy wings and angel dust. And there was this really, 
this, I keep saying chick, but I say chick a lot if that's offending anyone, but hot chick. And she you're was allowed to, cute. you're a chick yourself, so I'm you can chick. do that. <laughs> she was really, she was pretty, and I noticed her, and she does me, she's like, you're really sexy. I'm like, thanks. And then we started Kissing. hanging out. No, we were like hanging out oh, at a okay. drink. She was there with her husband. I was there with a friend who took me who I was not interested in, because only single, at the time, single women could go with, or, or you had to be a single woman on your own or go with a couple. Mm. And then we just started, um, I don't know, we started making out and then we were like on the bed. There was a bed, of course, in the middle of the room and then I looked around and there was like people around us and that watching, was kind of, of Now, yeah. was that a turn on because people were watching? Did it encourage you or were you Make you more nervous. No, I really, it's funny. I, I don't get nervous that often. I get nervous about the stupidest stuff. Like you would be like, really? Like, but sex stuff, I'm just like, no, I'm here, I'm open. And it was, yeah, I remember she like touching her her breasts. She had fake boobs. She was, had been like a, a former like dancer. And... um we just made it. It was a great kiss. I remember our kiss was amazing. Like, I remember it was like this, like, she was like, wow. I was like, wow. It was like this magical, like, hour. It felt like it was like an hour long. Now, did, you, did you find yourself getting wet because of it? <laughs> did you get turned on that much from it? Or was it like, I'm just kind of having fun right now? No, like I think, dancing. I, listen, if like I'm when not, I dance with a girl, I I'm having fun. I don't always get anything. hard on from that, you know? Is it like that? I was turned on. Like, I was like, we, we had like had a date. Okay. Like the oh, next week. Okay. Oh, wow. I uh, know. So some shit happened down there. No, nothing. Yet. Yeah, a little bit. We a little didn't tingly. go down each other. We yeah. didn't. Yeah, no, I was tingly. I was turned on, but we didn't okay. like go down each other. But I remember feeling like it was, it was really hot and it was fun to have that kind of like crush and mm. experience. Probably also crossing that like taboo line. Right. Of, like, right. That's probably exciting. What, what's exciting. the big difference between having sex with women and men? Is there a big difference or is it, besides the obviously fundamentals? Like, <laughs> I think that women, the physics, I yeah. think that women just like, we know, we just know each other's bodies and we, I think we know to go slow. We know how to pay attention. We're so much, we can like. You have the cheat code already. Yeah, we do. I'm like, I got this equipment. I've driven one of these before. Mm-hmm. Like, I know my way around the clitoris, your vulva. Like, I can kind of, and I can read it and you just kind of know what, we like kissing and we like touching. I don't know, soft, mm. pretty. Mm. We know the machinery. And then you said uh, a threesome. Was it after that that you had a threesome because now you're comfortable with another woman? I guess so. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was soon after that. Um, I had a three. I'm trying to think. But I think I had one before. I'm trying to remember. You guys. Is this like a reoccurring thing that happens a lot? No. <laughs> yeah. Not lately. Not and my, lately. my boyfriend's not happy about that. Day. He's like, what about you and all your threesomes? <laughs> He's like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. like, I'd be mad if I was him too. He's I hear so him mad. talking about all this on the radio. And like, yeah. now we start dating and you want to be just you and I? He's like, like literally. He's what like, what, why can't we go to one of your sex parties every day? Like, literally every, <laughs> every day. <laughs> He's like, I just, what, what What? am I supposed to do about this? This is your job. How can I do it? <laughs> I'm like, you know I suck at planning? Ask me at a time when I'm in front of the computer and I can email some people to hook it up. I don't know why. Like, he just thinks it's like gonna magically they're just going to show up because the truth is all of my threesomes and sexual experience that I've had were organic. They mm. were mostly when I'm not in a relationship. There was one guy I was dating in San Francisco for like a year but it was open in the sense of he wasn't like my boyfriend, boyfriend, but we saw each other once a week. And he emailed me when they're texting me when I was like, hey, there's this chick I want you to meet. She's never been the woman. Let's get drinks and see what happens. And then we all end up with this amazing now, threesome when we're all like not really attached in the sense of like he wasn't like my serious boyfriend. Well, I feel like it'd be more complicated when you're actually with someone. Not always, right? But when you're with it someone you just want to date hmm. or like you're serious with, that's uh-huh. probably much more complicated to have a threesome that's than it would be just a random. Right? It can be. It depends what stage you're in your relationship. So people listening are like, we want to have a threesome to spice it up. It's like, just like people have a baby to, to get it closer. Yeah, no, don't idea. have a threesome to heal your relationship. It's the couples who actually have the healthiest communication around it. Like you literally have to walk it through and be like, can we kiss her? Like, how are we both going to find someone that we're into? You have to set the boundaries, mm-hmm. the rules, the expectations ahead of time. It doesn't work for Yeah, because otherwise it's, it could get complicated. I, I feel like it's, I mean, I've only, I can count on one hand how many times I've had a threesome. But every time it was never lived up to what right. it did in your head. You know, they as, never do. Yeah, as a, as a young boy that was masturbating to that probably many, many times, when it actually got to game time, it's more awkward than right. it actually was like. And I feel like amazing. for guys, you got like you got your hands full. Like yeah. it's a one woman one could woman, be hard enough. Yeah, one woman's got, got enough. And then you got two. Spots. You got four breasts. Like you got you got a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. So it I sounds cool like... to tell your buddies. That's <laughs> what I always tell me. Like, more hands. It's, it's more of that than anything <laughs> yeah. else. Is to come back to school or work and be like, guess what I did? No, this I get it. Now it's I have more of a check. I have a question. When we say threesome, we always assume it's two girls and one guy. Right, right, right. What's is two guys and a girl? What about that? I think that would be amazing. That's on my bucket list. I've also talked that through with my boyfriend. I just never done that. No, is that? I, I feel like that'd be more. Ter- oh, okay. I did. Back up. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Recall. It, I yeah. have it. I think it was like an aborted threesome once. Like it was it almost happened, aborted. and I was like, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. Aborted. Abort, abort. I was like, literally, I was. It almost happened. I was like, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm out. Like this is what women. I've learned this a lot too. Is that you have to be Comfortable and men yeah, check in with yourself, and that's mm-hmm. why it's great not to drink too much. I think that's when I mean, I'm not a huge drinker, so I, I haven't made a lot of the sexual, I think, regrets a lot of people sure. have happens to be around drinking. I think you lose your inhibitions and you just do things that you might regret in the morning. And I know when I, my body doesn't feel right, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do it. Well, so. here's here's a good question for that then because I, th- I I know people who've done, you know, threesomes or threesomes where there's two guys and a girl and many times they feel ashamed afterwards. Like, uh, what do you say to people shame like over. that? Yeah, okay, there you go. What, what do you say to people like <laughs> that? Hangover, shame who, over. Feels, who feels shameful? I mean, I like the man or the woman or everyone? Oh, it's typically the women. I, I've had friends oh. that were females that had uh, like a threesome or had sex with two guys at the same time and felt well, kind of embarrassed about it. Well, what I say to anyone who feels shameful about sex is like, I just, if I could leave the planet and I could do anything is to help people get rid of shame and guilt and fear around sex. Mm-hmm. Because that's just her own voices. It could be her religion, her family, her childhood that people are going to say, you're a slut or judge her. Sure. But I think like, we don't have to take any of that in. And just like the fact that she probably had this beautiful experience mm-hmm. to wake up and judge it in the morning, I just think is is a disservice for, for herself. So really just to realize where are these, if you have these negative thoughts, because so many people do, I talk to women, they have different levels of that. They're like, well, I should wait four dates before I sleep with them or I should, mm. or whatever it is, I should lie about my, you know, what I really want. Or if I ask for what I want and Betty's going to think I'm a slut, all this like slut shaming and worry stuff. I just, I feel like the more that women can really get comfortable in their bodies asking for what they want and then realizing like, it's such a great act of self love to say, I want, I chose these men. I wanted to have it. And yes, it was the best night of my life. Are you going to challenge me on that? Like anyone who did come after Mm -hmm. her and even just tell herself, like I just gave myself this beautiful experience with these men and it felt great. And this is, it's mostly our biggest damage comes from our own thoughts. Like Mm -hmm. her I'm sure that no one else would judge her, and if they did, I would say those are not the people you want in your life. That's right. And the other, the other, I've always thought that it's it may be better, especially if you're going to experiment that way, to do it sober because I feel like if you don't yeah. afterwards, you can say, oh, "I was drunk," and that's why. Rather, when you're right. sober, you're like, "Okay, I made a decision. It's what I want." Exactly. Yeah. I think that that's a great. I mean, I think that right. I think a lot of the regrets come from that. Even, yeah. I mean, it's better to be sober. In these situations, I think. Okay. Now we started the podcast off by talking about all the toys, <laughs> all the awesome toys that we have on here. Do you now? Do you ever caution people on overusing it? Like, can you mm. get to a point where you desensitize you're, yourself? You're getting or... so good with having your toy yeah. and having you know, orgasms from that that you're maybe not spending as much time with your let's partner. Do you ever missionary. caution? You know, let's go back to missionary. Yeah. yeah, let's start from the beginning. I would. I don't caution people. I caution people over just kind of getting stuck in a rut, a sexual rut and doing the same thing every single day. So if you're, and we all have our hit it and quit it routines, right? I got two seconds, I want to get off and get out. So you have your vibrator, you have your toy and you just do it. And I would say, that's great that you're, I'm happy you're having orgasms because orgasms are so healthy. I mean, you guys, probably know this too for men and for women your prostate for women it helps with depression PMS your skin the glow like all of it is important to masturbate but if you only are doing it in one way and you're kind of like on this um, I was like autopilot with your toys I would say Try it. Like, try exploring other parts of your body without a toy or use the toy on your nipples. Use it down your thighs. Like, tease yourself. Tease yourself to make yourself, like, just see what other nerve endings you can stimulate because we have so many paths to pleasure. Something you said on our last podcast that I thought was absolutely brilliant was, and maybe you, I think you said this was, you know, sometimes it's okay to, to play with each other or whatever without the goal of orgasm. Yes. Just, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Right, because I think for a lot of couples, they, or just people in general, we get stuck in a rut because we do the same things over and over again and we think that orgasm is the end goal, but I wish that we could stop thinking of sex as this linear, like we made out, we touched my boobs, I gave him a blowjob, and then we have sex, and then we're over, we roll over and watch Netflix. Like, I wish it could be like, it doesn't have to be orgasm or even intercourse, but give each other a sensual massage, you know, make out like you used to at the beginning and just play with each other. Use toys, use nipple clamps, like I gave you some nipple clamps, mm-hmm. use bondage gear, like talk dirty, like try to give your partner an orgasm without touching. Well, I think a lot, this We're is so guys. important just because, and, I, and I've noticed this as I've gotten older is just even when I go in the bedroom, you would think that, oh, I'm in my home, I'm in my bedroom, that I'm, I'm mentally in this space to have sex. But a lot of times I find that I'm not there, even right. though I'm there. You're talking to me, you know, I'm talking to you, but I'm also texting on my phone and I'm doing emails still and I'm not fully engaged. And I find that the the conversation around anything, whether we're talking about stimulating conversation or toys or our favorite position that we did, just 
starting to start with that. I think sometimes people feel like yeah. you right away have to go Jump into- Jump into, well, that's why right. we don't have sex as much. I feel like, um, I would say foreplay starts after the last orgasm. So I, what that means is you're never done like connecting, seducing with your partner, like send a sexy text, talk about how hot it was last night and what you want to do the next time you see them. Like, Because our brain is the largest sex organ. So if you keep sex top of mind, then when you get into the bedroom, not every time we all have busy days, but you're kind of like already in, in the mode because to think that we should just, it basically means keeping that pilot light lit all the time. Mm. So it's just like, you know, if you feel great in your body from working out, mm -hmm. from exercise, we all know that that is a huge part when you're just taking care of yourself. You're going to be more ready for sex. Mm -hmm. But also, stress is the biggest killer of our sex drive. So if you can kind of have even a routine with your partner, like let's put our phones away when we get home for a few hours if we can and let's just talk or touch or watch porn together, read erotica, like do something that's like a new kernel of like sexiness, Try work out together. Like a different routine will kind of spark that because just saying like every night to go upstairs, get in the bedroom, yeah. I'm brushing my teeth, you're brushing my let's have sex. Like it's just like we should. Oh yeah. So if yeah. you can kind of like, even out, having sex outside the bedroom can be enough for people. Oh, if you're always going to have yeah. it in your bedroom, have it in the kitchen, in the living mm -hmm. room. That could make a huge difference. In the mind pump studio. In the no. Mind Pump Studio. No, it's You're a great place. Allowed. Yeah. 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 No. On Sal's, no more on Sal's chair. Yeah. 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 It, was on, it was on yours, Adam. Yeah. It was on it yours. Was. Uh, and, the, you know, along those lines, I think another thing, too, I mean, I was, I was married for 15 years, and the last probably 10 of it was dysfunctional. And there were times when we had, you know, one of the issues was sex. And it was some. I wanted a more, much more of it, and she didn't want much, uh, much of it at all. And then the very few times when she sometimes would want it, it's almost like she just expected me. And maybe because there's that stereotype of there being is. a man where he's he should, yeah, oh, I should just be able to take my clothes off and he should be ready. And if he's not, then, you know, what do you say to, to couples like that? Because yeah. I feel like that that's a common run, right? Oh, you're so a guy, you myths. should just be turned exactly. on. Exactly. Well, we talked about that earlier. You were saying that our, when you guys were on my show, we were talking about um, how women, you were actually hearing from women or men who weren't, didn't want sex as much. When you start mm -hmm. with who were out of shape or weren't as healthy, their libido felt challenge, low testosterone, that there is this myth that men should be ready to go. And it's, I feel like my heart goes out to men because there's so much pressure on men to, to be the leaders. Like I said, someday my prince will come. And so I really believe that men knew everything. They got to be ready to go. If they're not hard, it must mean that I'm not hot enough yeah, for them. And so I just think it's education. It's like understanding, go easy on yourself. Don't just kind of everything that you believe around sex probably isn't true mm. like everything that you've been told about everyone being ready all the time and sex has to be amazing the entire time you're together and sex doesn't take work and it doesn't take communication it doesn't take mixing things up like it does so if you don't if you don't believe any of that stuff like i want you to start like kind of listen to my podcast start researching sex talking about sex that's how it's going to get better but all these things are all these things are so untrue what about we, for couples who you know have children and you know post children Sometimes I think, you know, scheduling, busy, the hormones can tired. change, tired. And I, I noticed this with my friends. I have a lot of friends who are married with kids and I was married with kids at one point. And you just see like, oh, we used to have sex all the time. And now it's completely different. Like it's what normal. are some tips you can give? Yes. Well, first accept it. It's not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You guys are in crisis. It's just, it's a natural state of a relationship. It literally happens in every relationship. So you guys must have questions like this with people like, why did I, my stop, um, what is it called when you plateau? Like, why yeah. did I plateau yeah, after yeah, 30 yeah. days of this? Mm -hmm. Like, I, it, I mean, probably every day you get the same questions right. at certain levels. Mm -hmm. I get that question almost every day, 10 times a day, because people are like shocked. Yeah. Is it something wrong with us? We've been together, we have kids and we don't want to have sex. I'm like, no, okay, accept that this is going to happen in every relationship. So how you kind of can kind of, and I love couples to get ahead of that. And to expect that it's coming because it's still going to happen. But what do you mean by get way, ahead? Like, okay, like we're going to have a baby. Start talking about sex the okay. first time you have sex. Not in a way like, was that good? Good for you? Great. Okay. But like, what turns you on? Like, what feels good? What, like, how could we like up our game? Like, know that when we don't want sex, we talk about why we can figure out what turns each other on. Um, that's just one thing to make it part of your conversation. So when this happens, it's not like, ah, we got to like, what are we going to do? But if you haven't done that and you have a baby, your life gets busy, I think it's just to like, kind of just say like, let's work on this together. It's not one, don't, no blaming, no shaming. Don't try to fix it on your own. I think that this is when we hear like, you know, maybe she'll start getting like sexy lingerie and doing something just for her and maybe on his own. He, I don't know what he's doing on his own, but I think when couples are like, 
We're no longer connecting. So I think it's making a date night. This might seem so cliche and basic, but if you have a kid and you have not taken a night off, I know you're tired and maybe you can't afford a babysitter, but like you could find something, even if it's for three hours to have a you time where you guys are out without the kids. Um, Setting the alarm earlier in the morning, even if you're tired or later at night or having that night set that you know you're going to have sex or that morning is important. Get your hormones checked. There's a lot of women who are told by their doctor that six weeks you're ready to go. And I very rarely see that. I see that women are like their bodies, like it depends what kind of, even no matter what kind of pregnancy you had, delivery you had, um, it's going to affect your body in some way. It's going to take some repair. So I think that women don't know enough in the States about uh, repairing their pelvic floor and how much toll that can take. I did a great podcast with Heather Jeffcoat um, all about the pelvic floor. And so I think for women getting your hormones checked, getting it back in shape. So there's a lot of different things that, that are happening, but for couples, it's like, and again, taking sex off the table, you might not be ready for penetration yet. It might be a whole thing, but sensual massage, mutual masturbation where you're both getting off. It's intimate. You're lying on bed together, but you're doing your own thing. So it's sexy to watch your partner do their thing. And then, you know, and then you're also learning as well. Like, oh, I didn't know that she uses two fingers on her clitoris and sticks one inside or like that's how she gets herself up. I might take that information and use that next time. Mutual masturbation is very underrated. I mm. think so too. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good thing for couples to do and it requires less energy if you're tired or whatever. Right. You know, it's a, it'd be... I agree. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a... What about momentum? Do you think that plays a role too? Like I feel like sometimes we, we, come, in, we come and go in waves. Like all of a sudden you don't have sex for like a week or two yes. and then you have three or four... And is there ways to use that momentum as like to help kickstart or keep the sex drive? To keep it going? Yeah. That's a great question. Usually the momentum happens, who knows, maybe you were on a vacation or you right. both had some more time That's off. a great example because yeah. that always- Yeah, vacation sex is the best. Like it's just, that's not that, that's underrated. That, when we first started dating, that was one of the go-tos that I used to tell Katrina, like, because she's- she has an incredible sex drive. It was up to her. We'd have it seven days a week. Poor Adam. And I just can't keep up with her. <laughs> and so I always tell her, like, you know, if you feel like you're being deprived that way, like, you know me, all you have to do is get me out of here. You know, yeah. like, let's just go somewhere for a weekend. And so she runs the calendar and schedule, and that's typically what she does. I'll find out that, oh, we're <laughs> heading heading away for three days, and we're heading up to some spa resort for a couple of days. Right, but, and that does it. Because oh, you're because the thing about vacation sex is that you're, you're switching up locations. So anytime we can do something that's like spontaneous, Spontaneous and new because what happens to couples in long-term relationships is in the beginning everything's new everything's spontaneous everything's unknown it's like the first time you have everything cowgirl a mutual masturbator all this stuff but after a while it becomes routine and those are the ingredients that were so so important for hot sex all that newness and spontaneity becomes routine mm-hmm. and that's like that's more like you you know when you know um just, yeah, you get into your we're, routine. We're wired for novelty. You're wired for not, wait, we're wired for novelty. So when you take it to a new, you're not, you know, your bills aren't sitting around, it's not your TV, your clothes aren't on the chair, your kids can't hear you, and it's a new place that you're both discovering. You don't have to worry about the sheets. Maybe there's a great sunset you can watch. I mean, there's just so much newness to that, which is why I love vacation sex. Um, but how you keep that going is you continue to do novel things in your relationship. You continue to surprise each other you continue to talk about sex in a way like I know a lot of couples listen to my podcast together which has been kind of a fun like byproduct they'll be like we were on a road trip and we listened for five hours because it can be really um, challenging for people to talk about sex so if they're like oh well Emily said it well maybe we'll do it like Emily says that we could try this or what do you think about that I think it sounds weird to do massage and I, but I would would you like oh yeah let's take a massage class and then you got your massage class on the thing you know so it's like listen to things, watch things, like read erotica, like just keep it top of mind. Say like, God, you seemed like last night you were so turned on. What what was happening? Or like, what was the hottest thing that we did last night? Or what's your most memorable time we've had sex and why? Um, like just kind of keep that Such energy going. Such a great going. question to ask that I think very few people do. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to do is ask, like, tell me about the sex you've had in the past. Ooh, and, right. And, you know, you got to be kind of a self-confident individual to <laughs> right. ask that question. Right. But that can be very sexy, especially if you get away the you know get away from the whole like insecurity aspect of it. Yeah. and you hear the stories. Yeah, your partner's with you now, so if That's you can right. be okay with their past, like you guys are asking me at the threesome, I've told these. He's like, "Tell me again about the time." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, can you? Like, do you we did that. I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Let's but no, that. it's true. I think it's continue to f- put the fuel, like continue to stoke that fire, however you you can. Like, and for for a lot of people, it is like feeling good in their body. So. It is wearing something sexy. It mm. is like, and I don't think you're doing it for your partner. Like, I'm going to get laundry that he finds hot or she finds hot. It's like, what makes me feel sexy? And to continually, like, 
keep challenging that. Now, now, Em, you've been doing this for a really long time. So have you seen like a difference in the generations? Like, for example, mm. like I've been, Are there was, trends? I was excited. Yeah. To, I was excited to talk to you. I just finished this book called iGen and it's about the generation now that's growing up, which they, they call the iGen now. Yeah. And there's a term called lugs and bugs. Are you familiar with no. this term? Okay, so it, it stands for lug is a lesbian until graduation. Oh, that I've heard. Lesbian until graduation. Yes. And, and bug is bisexual until graduation. Uh-huh. And it's kind of like this movement in the younger generation of exploring your sexuality yeah. until you graduate from college. And they've termed them as lugs and bugs. So have you noticed a difference in the generations? And do you see good things, bad things? Do you think that's a good thing? Like, which, what are your thoughts on all I that? I think, it, yeah, I do. I think it's funny because I first heard lugs probably about 10, 15 years ago, but I didn't know about, you know, bugs. But I guess it's kind of the same thing. Like, sure. let's explore and figure out who we are. I think it's great for people to have a period where they're exploring. And I want to know why just until graduation. It's like, well, better button up now and get a job and stop all that bisexual stuff. Like, yeah. what, are, what if you're into it? Like, what if it felt... Great, and I feel like um, what if it was something that you might, you know, that you might want to continue that lifestyle? I think we're much more open now to people who are experimenting sexually. There was a study that just came out that said most people are are not straight. Like the majority of I, the I gens are not particularly straight. Like Kinsey always said, everyone's on the spectrum. Like the the one is being very straight. Ten and rare that people are on one end. Of very the other. rarely, huh. very rarely is anyone a one. Even men. Mm-hmm. They're not. You really get two or three, but it's showing that we're just much more open. And I think when we're giving people permission to explore, because um, I think like twenty years ago, maybe the generation, or maybe even like thirty, they were like, "Oh, I kissed a girl. I got drunk and kissed a girl at the bar because my boyfriend thought it'd be hot." You know, now that, I think people are more on having relationships. Do you ever actually. think it's too? I mean, Doug's always asking me about this, about yeah. experimenting this late in his age. Do you think there's ever a time <laughs> that's, that's too late? Never to too late. Okay. Is it ever too late to get in shape? No, no, I feel no. like we're all working this. It's pretty much the same thing. Like, there's so many parallels between yeah. like, tra- like becoming sexually. So there healthy you go, Doug. It's not healthy. too late to be a bug. Yeah. Never too late. <laughs> <laughs> never. I'm just glad that people want to know. Like, I'm glad that people are interested. No, never too late. We'll give you some toys too. Yeah, we got you covered, yeah. Doug. We got you, Doug. Really? Any, 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 it wasn't just for them. Toys. Yeah. Okay. Any, any fear? <laughs> like, smile. do you notice any sort of trends with the questions that you get from the 17 to 20 yes. year olds? And like, what do you? I'll tell you my fears. My fears are about porn. I yeah. think that we're kind of we're in a porn I'm crisis, mm-hmm. and I'm not anti. I'm I'm for porn like, when you use it in a healthy way. Like mm-hmm. I think it's great for couples. I love Erica Lust porn. EricaLust.com. She's like, it's from the female gaze. It's kind of porn mm. that kind of have just a, I don't know, a different more perspective, more tasteful, like more soft, and more soft, more plots. Um, but <laughs> there's plots and um, better angles. No, but it's really great porn. But I think that for couples, great learning tool for people. They can just. I like porn, but but now it's becoming crisis level because there's a lot of young kids who, the, when they think of sex, they think of like a gangbang. They think like when I have sex, there's going to be six women who showed up, and, and and why didn't that happen? Or just <laughs> women are making sounds like they're like they think that's a script. Like mm-hmm. I should walk this way, move this way, and since sex education is absent and or abysmal. Mm-hmm. Especially in the United States, when that's all you're seeing, and then you go straight to having sex, it's like horrific. And I would love to be able to get to all of these young minds and just so they know, like, please, like, there are so many other ways to to learn about sex, to have sex, and you're doing it all. Now, wrong. can you so, tell? Can you tell that by the questions that you're getting? I mean, what are you what are you seeing? Like, what are they asking you? Like, when you um, to put that together? Because I agree too. I think yeah. we all are on the same page that that's. It's so accessible. You yeah, know? it's so accessible. It's could the you desensitization. Imagine? Like right. yeah, when, when when we were kids, a porn magazine was you could trade it for a oh, bike. Cool. Yeah, exactly. So you could trade it Literally, for a bike. Literally, I could trade it for a bike, and now it's like <laughs> I can go and click, 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 click. And I read some studies that show that, especially when you're an adolescence, it train, especially the male brain, because it's so wired. It's wired right. for novelty even more than the female brain, and it starts to develop right. these patterns where you need a particular type of dopamine hit to where when you're with a regular person. You it get, doesn't do the same thing. Yeah, right. and erectile dysfunction is like Huge, growing in the right. young population in, in, in ages that it never existed before. Exactly, and I think mm-hmm. it is because of porn because you got to keep upping the ante. You got to keep elevating it to get more turned on again. So yeah, that's the problem with porn and people of all ages. I think that mm-hmm. that especially here from men that they're like, I can't get off with my partner anymore. Right. So what you got to do with that is just kind of like everything. I'm, not, I'm never going to tell you. I'm not going to say cold turkey really? though. I well, would, but I think that scares people. I would say cold turkey would be amazing if you could do it, but maybe you just like don't start with the porn and you can end with the porn or try to not every other time, but I just think it's going to be hard. You might not have an orgasm right away. You might not get as hard, but like you can de, just like you rewired your brain, you can deprogram it do as you, well. How do you feel about uh, like 
Tinder and these like readily accessible like uh, I feel apps. Like, I feel like it's all fine. I don't believe it's all about sex. I think if you want to get laid and you want to go on Tinder and have sex, that's what it can be for. You'll find it. But I don't think it's like, you know, I think it's a numbers game. And I think for people who want to meet people and they want to meet a lot of people and they want a lot of options, I think it's, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. But I want, I, that's a lot of people meet on Tinder. But I just think, to think like, I owe someone something because they took me to dinner or because I'm on Tinder, I should sleep with someone. I just, I don't, I just don't think it's Do you, do you think true. because it's so easy though to hook up now, do you think that actually could be having an effect on the conversational skills that we were talking about earlier? Well, I communication? Think, well, I think that, that they're, what we're seeing in the iGen, I'd love to that read that book. It sounds fascinating because they grew up literally with the phones book. in their hands, right? They were the ones with the iPads when they were born, right? Like whatever age kids are sitting there holding the mm-hmm. iPads. Um, I think that they definitely have less um, developed communication skills and intimacy and vulnerability and all those things that we would learn by hanging out with our friends and we were not distracted on our phones the whole time. We'd actually have play dates. Like we'd sit in the room and I play with Barbies with my friends all day or we'd go out and ride our bikes and I just think that we're so obsessed with the phones now that we or with just texting everyone, like picking up the phone, like <gasps> like what do you mean I have to call them? Like I remember having people work for me like five years ago in their early twenties. They're like what? I have to pick a phone call? I'm like, it's okay, people. You know, so just imagine you can't make a phone call. You're certainly not really going to be comfortable talking. So yes, I do think all of this, like we just need to take the phones away for a while. I I try to put myself in the, in the shoes of a a 14, 15 year old with a phone. And I know what I would have done with a phone that can take and send pictures. (laughs) And that's what scares me because now you're getting kids who are mm. sending pictures of themselves and yeah. doing video. Oh, so wrong. And then it's out there. And it lives forever. forever. And it lives forever. Because so I would have for sure done that shit. I mean, <laughs> right. Years yeah. old, for sure. I, I would have been I hope people in a lot listen of trouble. It, go, it never goes away. And, and let me tell you this. If you are going to send a naked photo right now, I don't care what your age is, whoever gets it is going to turn to the person next to him and show him. Like, I've been with so many guy friends who are like, check this out. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't, she didn't want me to see that, but that's going to happen. But if you're cool with that and not just the person next to him, it could get out mm-hmm. there, then you should do it. But otherwise, right. why send the pictures? Mm-hmm. Don't do right. it. Oh, what? I know what I wanted to ask you. We were talking about porn earlier and this popped in my head. I read a study, I think it was done by Pornhub, which is one of the most visited uh, porn yes. websites online. And they were serv- they were showing the porn habits of their users. What I find fascinating about that, by the way, is people can say one thing, but their porn habits, yeah, stats what they otherwise. click on will show the truth, like oh. when you're in the heat of the moment. So someone might say, I'm not into that, but then you can see that they're... The second most watched porn by women was gay men. Yes. So That's this is, been a trend for a while. Is it really? Yes. A lot of women like watching gay porn, gay men. And, it, and now the article said it was because it's the same reason why guy like men like watching two women. It's two things you like. But then also, I guess the gay porn was shot differently. The men are better looking. It's not so much of the. It's not so much about the like the act as it is like men, just like beautiful men, oh, like wow. okay. making out and like being more. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never. That's never been my thing. But I know it's so common. It's like that is one of the most common types of porn for women, no. and I think it is because. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. It's two of the things that you like. There's no other. You're not. There's no other. You're not comparing yourself to maybe a woman in it or two. Mm-hmm. You can take the woman out of the equation. And I just think it can be really hot to watch. I think watching any sex act can be really hot if you take all your judgments away. Sure. Do you, like, do you think it's a it's a good or a bad thing to feed into certain fetishes? Like if there's somebody who watches porn and you do have kind of a weird porn search like Sal, <laughs> it, do you think it's... Don't look at my history. Do you think it's... You think it's a, cause, I mean, on Pornhub now, like you could watch anything. Literally anything, like, right. Literally anything. And that's legal. And so I, sometimes I think like, do you think that's a healthy thing? Like, for example, I was actually just on Pornhub the other day (laughs) and and yeah, what pops up in front of me is like, you know, sleeping with my, my mom. You know, it's like it's like a, oh, it's the a, stories. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's all inner family stuff. It's yes. big right now. Yeah, that's just, weird. Yeah. Yes. So, and I just and I'm thinking to myself like, you know, if, uh, if, if, if I, I like was somebody who was into this, would this be a healthy thing for me to masturbate to it and watch it? What do you think about that? Because I know that I mean, obviously they're doing. They're sure getting with like, their mom. Who's mom Well, step mom. It's a yeah. step family. Is a big yeah, I, I was just talking to my well, boyfriend about this. He's like, still probably not the best idea, right? Right, but it's it's still a little different because I could. I, could, I think I've seen step mom, aunt. I've seen like kind of okay. all, all okay. the. Above. Mom would be like, oh, yeah, but step yeah. I stepsister. 
he was telling me, one. he's like, it's a whole genre now of just the step. Because I guess there's less aggression towards women in porn now. Is what my boy, this is just from my boyfriend telling me. His, his, his research, research. And that there's all this step stuff. I'm like, that's just, but why is that hot? I don't get it. And he's like, mm. it's taboo. It's unknown. I'm like, but even right. that. And then I'm worried that there's going to be all these young kids who have step siblings who are like, maybe we should. Like, yeah. Well, that's, yes. what I'm, that's where I'm at. That's uh, where I'm going with yes. this is I'm just curious. I'm just like, I just talked about this yesterday. I was like, oh. You got like screamed. I don't remember where I was like, ah. Part of me feels like it's a conspiracy because then it's like, you know, you have all these searches in your search history and they're collecting these titles. That you might also you, like. Yeah, right? it's like you, you, you're just it's watching the video and then it, it turns onto that title and they're collecting the they, information. For sure. I think they, I think that's what I said. That's I said to him, are you sure? Brain. No, I think you're right. <laughs> but it's like Netflix. It's just, like you might also like. the backdoor like, bandits keeps coming up on yours. Yeah, every right? time. It's like the predictive yeah. watching the schedule. thing. Yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I, I don't know. The fetishist thing, I'm not sure what's who's driving Well, it, le- it leads me to this this conversation that I wanted to have with you also, which is what we see happening with um, the sex dolls and AI. Yes. Oh, so yeah. what is your thoughts on that? Because, now, I mean, these things are getting... I mean, and in our oh, time, in our lifetime... I've seen them. They're going to be fucking as real as real can come. Well, they have brothels already for them. Yeah, right. they do. So what are your thoughts on that? And are you pro, not? What do you... Th- tell me. I'm in the middle with sex robots because I feel like... Um, it can be great for people who are lonely. Like loneliness is an epidemic right now. Mm-hmm. You realize that everywhere. Um, they just like pointed like an minister of loneliness in the UK, like in the United States too. We're lonely. We're isolating. So for people who maybe are of disabilities and they can't have sex, so they can't have sex as they want to, uh, people who want companions, um, women who actually want a guy to go down on them for or someone to go down on them for more than 15 minutes, they maybe you could have program the robots, do a lot of oral, um, I think that they could have some good, some therapeutic, some healing purposes having a robot. But do I think that we might just abandon everything we know? We're like, cool, I don't have to talk to someone. I have to take them to dinner. I don't have to compliment them. And I could just have sex with this thing. I, I, I do think that that could, might be something that's, that we're that's what to con, That's what concerns me, especially when Doug was asking about ordering one. I was like, this is what I'm worried about <laughs> is that would you keep coming to work every day? You know, or are you going to be stuck in the you room know, with this? I, I think you still like, have to talk to us, yeah. Doug. I think yeah. like anything, yeah. it's going to be like any powerful or if, or any powerful tool, it can be used for function or dysfunction, Yes, right? like anything, right? Yeah, because I could foresee sex dolls being an easy way for couples to experiment with their fantasy they can threesomes. They threesome. Yeah. Right, but, thank but you. It's safe, and we don't really want to do that in real life, but this is kind of a way for us to play with our fantasy type of deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I could also see this, this dysfunction where somebody's like, I don't want to be with a human. I'm just going to be well, with Well, then, then yeah. we've talked about this. We speculated oh, on- Oh, well, they're going to go with them. You know? Yeah, uh, well, we speculated on what happens when, you know, because this is the first introduction to it, then the next crazy step is when they start making the dolls for fetishes and stuff. Yes. And what happens when they make- Child, they already have uh, child dolls uh, and dolls. That's 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 yeah, and, making laws. And then they introduce something like this, and you know, what if we potentially see less of that happening on the streets because now they're all doing it in their with their toys in yeah, the house? Yeah, that's so. really really upsetting. Then you're yeah. right. I don't think we, but it's very close too. Like that's happening in the next you know few yeah, years. Yeah, this is. I just want to encourage people to continue to connect, self love, love your partner. Like like when you put the phone down. I feel like we. Because after a while, you could get a robot, and it feels like it's the same as your human, and it's mm-hmm. easy, as a human, and it's easier. But I, I, yeah, I think it's um, people are already in the sex toy industry. It's like you know, billion dollar industry, bigger than that. And mm-hmm. with toys, I feel like there's also toys now. Like some of the toys I gave you guys, like the pivot, the yeah. cock ring, you could use that. And oh, this one, this one is a. I mean, oh. it's very jive. You could use it with a remote, so your partner she could said wear you could this be across the world doing this. Across what? the world, there's an app. Called, that's the WeVibe. Um, the We. What is this? This is the blue. Uh, the jive. Jive. She can wear that inside of her. Um, that's a oh, co- wow. you, you can program that from across the country, across the room using your phone. You can control it. You can control their pleasure. You could use their app called WeConnect, like almost like it's like a FaceTime app, that's but you could see each other. So to me, that's been around now already for a few years, and that's pretty freaking cool. But to have like a like you just would never. I love the smell, the touch, the taste of like a human. I, I yeah. have that experience. So I just. I hope we just continue to realize mm-hmm. the, the importance of real yeah, At the end of the day, just like with anything, you have to, I mean, be psychologically sound with yourself and have self-love. And then and then, however you express that, it's probably not going to be dysfunctional. You know what I right, mean? Right, exactly. Otherwise, it's going to come out 
in dysfunctional, maybe harmful ways to, you know, to yeah, you I and think, your partner. I think it can be harmful, but yeah, just like everything. It's like masturbation can be healthy until it's not, until well, it's like all you're doing and you can't get to work because all you're doing is masturbating, is, watching porn. Are you porn. seeing more, ma- because of the ease of access to porn, are you seeing more addiction to masturbation addiction or issues with masturbation? Yeah, I think I'm seeing, there is more like sex addiction if you believe in that. And there's controversy around even sex. But I think anything that you're compulsively doing that you can't stop and there's consequences is an addiction. So for some people, like, do I have an addiction? I masturbate twice a day. And it's like, okay, well, do you have a relationship? Are you going to work all the Like, are you healthy? Otherwise, yeah, everything's fine. I'm like, there's no problem. Phew. But if you're, mas- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you're masturbating, you're like, no, I actually, I do it like 10 times a day. I can't keep down a job. I can't keep down a relationship. Then there is a problem. Then there's a problem. I think we are seeing more of this desensitization like we talked about and more people, um, talking about just that they can't have sex without porn or they've learned too much about it. So yeah, I think there's more of that. If a woman has never had uh, a G-spot orgasm, what are some steps she can take to trying to get that? That's a great question. I think that- Or is um, that a real thing, right? It's a real thing. No, it's a real thing. And I think it's more internal, like G-spot, cervical orgasm. I mean, there's a lot of different, just the internal part. I think for a lot of women, they are not, um, again, they just think it's clitoral. And the thing is, they're like, I can only have a clitoral- Clitoris, clitoral orgasm and then I'm out and the thing is it's like first of all it's all connected as well so the clitoris is that little magic button but there's also you know 8,000 nerve endings you see my the wishbone there right of the mm-hmm. clitoris that there's actually clitoral legs that go deep that go down inside behind the labia and it's all that area which is also very connected to the g-spot so it helps to be really turned on have a clitoral orgasm first and either using fingers your own or your partner's or a toy can be a great way to find it um, and be patient and to just like, there's different, like, and if you go to website, my website, sexwithemily.com, we have tons of like different blog posts and, and articles about, blog posts and podcasts about how to find it. But my thing would be to, what really helped me was relaxing into it, having specific masturbation sessions dedicated to that, to finding it and to also, um, doing my Kegel workout. Like I oh. Oh, I told you guys, I have my F1F Kegel camp to remember to do them because the stronger your PC muscles are, you're like, you're sending energy to that level. They're um, down to your pelvic floor. You're breathing into it. You're pumping it. And those, when those are the muscles that contract when you orgasm. And so if they're stronger, meaning even you're just paying more attention to it and you're using them and controlling them, it will also help you have more um, G-spot orgasms. But for me, I learned with the toy and then I was able to bring that into a, relationship with the penis. Em, you started blogging first, right? No, I didn't. I started podcasting first. Oh, you podcasted 2005. first. 2005. And then when did you start blogging? Um, soon after that. I mean, because you had to have a website then. It was all about the website. So right. I'd start posting, yeah, blogs. Now, do you do you recall some of the ones that were the most viral or that have helped the people out the most? Like, do you have an area where you can find them on the website? Oh, God. All at, but they're or? all really, I mean, God, there's so many. Like, I could look at what's the most viral now. We post stuff every single day. I have an amazing team. I'm not doing as much of the blogging, but Jane, my producer, we have writers. Yeah, just be, her, it just be interesting. Yeah, what, what's like okay, trending? I'll tell you or what's, what's been trending one? on Sex Demi right now. Um, Squirting. Oh, great. That's squirting. a great topic yeah. right yeah. there in itself. How did we not cover that? Six most common sex issues. The art, the art of seduction. Of seduction. Mm-hmm. But we have, I mean, thousands of thousands of podcasts. Mm-hmm. I have thousands of podcasts. Yeah, I figured you had, a, years. you had a ton. But it's really everything. But I would say that would that would make sense. People, um, uh, seduction. What was the other one you said? Sorry. Six, six common. Oh, mistakes. Because people yeah. just want to know, am I normal? Is this okay? And what What, what are some of those? I would say the six most common things is people don't communicate about sex. Um, they don't um, They don't keep up with their healthy masturbation routine outside of the relationship. Was it the six most challenges around sex or around relationships? So back that up. Are there, you actually, so you actually- <laughs> They don't use lube. You, they don't you use You encourage toys. masturbation by yes. yourself too. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you something. That's good because my girl gets mad at me every time I she do it. She does? Myself. Yeah, she's- Oh my God. I'm so glad we're talking about this. Yeah, it's good. Now I know a book to give you. Oh, good. See? Yeah. See, you asked me. See, I'm like, honey? I'm allowed to masturbate by myself every once in a while. Let me tell you. I think that I hear <laughs> this more time. from women than men or men complaining about their girlfriends or like, my girlfriend, I have to hide it from her because I think that women, and I thought this with the mirror guy when I was 25, um, he also watched a lot of porn and I remember feeling so confused that it was the best sex of my life and it was amazing. Why would he still watch porn sure, without right, me? Right. Mm. I was like, does he want me to look like the blonde with the big boobs? Cause I'm short and brunette and don't have big boobs. Like, it was so confusing why he would still need that. Right. But what I've come to find out and come to learn and what I will tell you and your girlfriend is that 
self-love and masturbation is healthy whether you're in a relationship or out of a relationship. It's a release. It's a stress reliever. It's just guys have to do it. Women have to do it. I often have to convince women and remind them to do it. It's kind of like work out. The more they do it, they're more going to want to. And let guys know it's okay. Yeah. And then let her know that it's it's part of you having a healthy, you know, being connected to your body. I, I think for, and, and I think where it, where it comes from for her is that because like I said, she wants to have it seven days a week. So if she finds out that I'm masturbating and I'm not giving her sex that Oh, night, that I understand. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't understand. You see her face change right there. She's wrong. like, oh, now I understand second. where yeah, she's coming right. from. Yeah, but I want to know with this insatiable, what if she masturbated? I'm pro that. No, but of course, but maybe like to put all that on you when you you run a company, you got a big job, you're super busy, to make you feel bad about that and to guilt you into it, that doesn't make me feel great. And for her to kind of take care of herself, like why does she need you for that? It might be great for her to explore. I don't know what she's into, but maybe she could like on her own be like, I'm going to have a G-spot multi whatever. Or I'm going to learn to play with my, I'm going to get a butt plug and play to see what my, how it feels to stimulate my right. butt. Right. I think that, you know, I'm going to watch erotica and get I'm really talking. aroused and turned on. And I'm going to show you, tell you about the sexy thing I did when we're next time we're having sex. Like I think there's some stuff she could do on her own. And then it might not just be about the sex with you. It's something about connection and feeling needed and desired by you. And she might have some abandonment issues that if you're having sex, you might leave. I mean, in a way that's not even tangible to her. So, right, right. but I think, you know, that's a lot of pressure. You guys, it's compromise. Yeah. Mm. Couples have to compromise. I think we do a pretty good job with that. I, yeah. You seem like the help, like literally, yeah, yeah, we, I love you guys as a yeah. couple. So I'm not putting her down. Everything yeah. you've said is super helpful. No, and, and, and I like, and I like sh- the reason why I share it is because I know a lot of couples probably yes. have similar things they go through and this is stuff that we communicate and I hear that from- was something that, you know, she communicated to me and I, and I understand because if she's asking for sex seven days a week and I can only give it to her three because I just masturbated maybe four hours before she got home right. and now I'm not in the mood for it. So I could totally understand. Yeah, I where- understand that too, but you have every right to masturbate like right. that's not like it's one or the other because she can ever you guys could also I don't know you could go down on her she could masturbate in front of you you could kiss her while she uses her toy right. like you know what I mean there's ways to do it where you don't have to yeah, be involved this point. is a different yeah. way of that happens sometimes like with I mean I've done that where I'm like no I'm just gonna get off he's like great I just masturbate or I'm tired or we just went and I didn't have an orgasm it's like it's hot to me if he's just there and we're making out and I, I don't really need anything else mm-hmm. like just the fact that he's here so for her there might be other ways she could look at having pleasure. That, oh. that have you done penis. that? Have you offered like, well, oh, I'll just go down. I, I do. That's okay. exactly what I do. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, that's it's for me. It's a, it's a simple fix. Is that it's just being it's being aware that she has a very high sex drive, yeah. you know, and that I'm I don't have as high of a sex drive as she does, but yet there's still times where I'm gonna masturbate, and if I do do yeah. that, and she comes home and she's in a very sexual mood. I'm not going to selfishly not give her sex or do anything with her physically because right. I did something earlier. So. Yeah, you can make out, you can right. bring her to the bedroom, so there's the comp- there's a, there's there a is compromise. a compromise. There right. it is right there. Yeah. Excellent. God, right. every time we're with you. This is so what fun. A great conversation. I know. I yeah. love being yeah. with you guys, really. Yeah, this is, uh, this so is always, always great. I Can't know. wait to have Good you up fun. to our studio. I want to come up there. Thank you for this. Love the Bay Area. Yeah. Are these, yeah. are these, uh, this Let's right have to put them back. This right here is exciting. Too. I want to meet your boyfriend, too. You got to bring him he's up. Amazing. There. Yeah, he's amazing. He's great. Let he's him come hang out with us. He's so fun. Yeah, you would love him. Oh, he's a comedian. Yeah. He would crack you up. I mean, thank God he's funny. Because what if he's a comedian and he wasn't? Um, yeah. You, now are you are you turned down or turned down turned on by humor more than I, more than normal than a normal person? Yeah, I love humor. I do. I mean, but I think every woman's like, oh, I want to tell a funny. That's a big one for women. That's yeah, he we just he cracks me up and he's um he's kind and he's he's thoughtful and he's he's funny as hell. Yeah, no, we just we laugh and we we don't take it anything too seriously and he's very obviously very open to. What I'm doing here, and he's down. So you got to be a confident person if you're going to be with a sexual. <laughs> exactly, well, no, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Actually. Yeah, there's no jealousy with us. He's like, "Do you have your life?" You know. Yeah. So yeah, because I could I could see the be a, being a challenge, especially for a woman to be open sexually and to talk about certain things because a man might feel insecure. Or challenged yeah. By oh, that. for sure. And I've been with those guys, not very long, but I've mm-hmm. met the and those guys probably wouldn't even ask me out now. Like if you Google me and you're like, oh. No, that's Forget not it. my jam. But yeah. a guy who's with me, you got to be really confident. Now, you, know? you guys are eight months in right now. Yep. Okay, so by now, probably had at least one, maybe two disagreements or don't like how you live or yeah. do something like that. What, what If there is anything that- <laughs> That's a great question. What do we fight about? Yes. I mean, we don't really fight that much. Mostly it's been about, um, I'd say that he gets frustrated with me because I I have a lot of anxiety and I, I, I work a lot and I'm not great with- um, I guess it's more about me being like, I have so much to do and I don't have time to do it, which has kind of always been like, I was in college like that. Like I was, mm. I work, I've always been like a- Overachiever. Workaholic, overachiever. 
So I think it's when I we're together finally. I'm like, but I have to do all these things, and it's just. And most of the time it's not. It's just this general craziness. So I think when I don't make enough time for us, I think is the challenge. So do you have certain things that you do? I, I mean, I brought up earlier about, you know, I, I figured out or I hacked into this that, you know, hey, if I'm working like crazy, I'm having a hard time connecting. We're not having enough sex. Take me away. Yeah. And that's like her go to. Yeah. Have you figured we're out? We're going to Greece. So okay. we'll see how that goes. We're going to go to Greece for two weeks. Um, I think that for me, I'm also much more con- like I realize that there's certain stuff that I just don't have to share with him. Like I don't, and when he comes over now, I realize like, I just have to like his love language is quality time. So when I'm, he comes over and I'm still working. Like I can't do that. Like I just try to like, when we're together, we are together and I'm putting work away, but it's not like we fought about it a lot. There's been, it's been a really busy, um, you seem year. like the type of person where if he were to call you out, you'd be like, uh, Oh, I love it. Right. I'm like, Oh, I hear it. He's so, the thing is he's almost, he's, I've learned so much from him the way he calls me out. I'd be like, did you really want to say it that way, or, or baby? Like, I hear he calms. He's so good at calming me down. Like, I'll just now I just get anxious, and then like a second, I'll just, he's tall. He puts his arms around me, and I'm like, ah, like I just kind of he relaxes me in that way. And he's also really good at. He's never we don't attack each other. He's not judgmental in that way. Like he's just very much like, is that the way that you think you want to say it, or maybe there's another thing happening? Like he just, I don't know. He's really we're good for each other. And what do I get to notice about? Probably when he um. He drinks too much. Like he doesn't, he, he probably shouldn't drink mm. that much. But he doesn't that much. But when he does, I'm like, not your best self. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, smoke pot, do other things. But the drinking, like not uh, your jam. But really, otherwise, we really yes. like, and there's been times in this relationship where I've been like, no, it won't work. And then we get past it in a really healthy way. So it just keeps getting better. We uh, communicate mm. really well. That's excellent. That's good. Yeah. That's well, thanks for coming on the show. Oh my God, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Always a good time. On. And you got to come up and visit. We should be like frequent flyer guests on each other's for shows. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For I sure. Agree. I will come visit. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>